someone who is good at hearing and seeing can take something up. I have just decided to visit, should I say a doctor or someone? She will tell us more. You are on UBC. My name is Susan Yawol, the life I live. Hi. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. How is it going? Okay. Good. Yeah? You're going to tell us your name so someone out there knows who I have to deal with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm Josephine Likichoru. And uh, I am an audiologist. I don't know if you have heard that word before. Many people don't know it, but I will explain what we do. So that's what I do. Okay, we have an audio, 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 audiologist. Audiologist. Okay, we shall go with that. <laughs> I'm also not so good with the word because it's my first time hearing it. I know me and you. Someone out there also never knew this mm -hmm. exists. Mm -hmm. So what is this all about? Okay, like it sounds audio, it's like sound. So that's how simple it is. Audiology is a study of sound, of hearing. So uh, the audiologist is the person who studies how to deal with hearing. So we do, we check hearing, we test your hearing to see how good it is, how bad it is, and then we are able to treat or to manage the problem of hearing that you have. We also do other things like uh, problems with balance. So what, what I mean is that we deal with every problem that comes from the ears. Yes, for those who are studying audiology is a, a part of ear, nose and throat. So those doctors who do ear, nose and throat, ear, audiology is part of that. So you cannot have ear, nose and throat without audiology. So they go hand in hand. Okay, I yes. think for today, we are just here to learn. Because learning is better. When you get to learn earlier, you get a solution. A mother who is out there, please sit down, take a note of what you're going to talk about today. Maybe you might be either a victim or a relative is a victim. Let's look at expression like, how does someone know that I need to go and test my ears? Okay. So, um, let's start with parents and children. How do you know that your child may not be hearing? So you need to check. So usually these children, when they are young, let's say a child has been born for a few weeks, when you bang the door, they don't wake up. You know how you say, you people don't make noise, the child is sleeping. That child will not wake up from sleep when people are shouting, when you bang the doors. And uh, those children need to be tested. Uh, in, in some countries, they test children at birth. When a child is born, they check the child there and then. There and then before they are discharged and they know there is a problem or the child will be okay. Okay, yes. a pause. This means a child can sense the hearing there and then after the birth. Exactly. So the child's ears are developed, everything is developed. If there is no problem, the child will respond to sound. They will start off at loud sound, they will cry, or if they are circling, they will stop. To just pay attention just to what is sound. going on. Yes, a mother will know that this child is responding well or not. And also, when, when as a child grows, the child starts speaking, picking sound. They start at a stern age. They start looking for sound sources of sound. If where is it a, coming? Where is from? it coming from? At, for example, six months, this child will know. Oh, will turn to the source of sound. If some sound is this way, they will turn. So. So a child will know. So if a child is not looking for sound, you bang things and they're just doing their own things, you know the child is not is not really hearing. Also, if a child if your mother comes, if you're not there and you're coming and you, the child hears your voice, they will get excited even before they see you. That's when you know your child is hearing. So if the child doesn't do that or they just get surprised that you have arrived, that is a child who is not hearing. And as they grow older, you find that children don't obey commands. So, so these are the children who may be hearing or maybe not hearing well. Half, half. Half, half. Those ones are the ones who have trouble because parents think they are stubborn. They will beat the them half. The problem of hearing. 
bring this, the child will bring a wrong thing, or the child is not going to hear and not Respond. do what you have told them. And then the parent is like, this is a very stubborn child. And then as they grow, they go to school. Now, at school, this child is not going to perform well. You're, then you say, this child is stubborn, he plays a lot, he's not doing well in school, but it's because the child is not hearing well. So this goes on and on in school, and then when you, even when you grow up and you're not hearing well. Of course, there's a difference between someone who is not hearing at all and someone who is hearing, like you said, half, half, 50, 50. Mm. So at a person who is hearing something and is, is in, in between there, usually they, they, they are withdrawn. If they're adults, they, because they don't want you to know that they're not hearing, when you talk to them, they'll say yes, yes, yes. But they did not hear what you're saying. They don't want to be ashamed to say pardon all the time. So that happens to adults. Also in adults, you find that some people shout. They talk louder. So when you talk to them, they think you're not hearing them because they are also not hearing themselves. They will talk louder. So the volume is high. The volume is high because he talks at a volume where he can hear himself and say, okay, I think everyone is hearing me. And also there are some types of hearing problems where the person talks quietly. They talk softly because their sound is over amplified. So, we, 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 so when we test, we know the different types of uh, hearing problems. And uh, so those are the things which, which can cause you to know that oh, you need to go for a test. Or if you're watching TV with other people, you want the volume louder. Everyone is saying, oh, this is too loud, but you're comfortable with that volume. So that's a kind of person we need to test. And you don't just say you have a problem, but how much is the problem? That's what we do. Okay, let's look at the child. The mother has given birth to a young baby of one week. Like you said, one week would be the best in Uganda because other countries test there and then. But then Uganda, we don't have such other equipment to test in some hospitals. Let's look at a situation where a mother has given birth. Is it, is it necessary Every mother should test their children? Yes, it's necessary because uh, most of the time we find that it's too late. People come to us when the child is five years, the child is six years, and uh, there are so many things that have to happen before. Let's say the best time is the earlier the better. The best time is three years and below. So if a child is not hearing uh, when they are younger, they will not learn to speak. Because a child speaks what they hear. So uh, when a child overgrows, the part of the brain where of speech is not going to respond so to sound because they are not they have not been receiving sound. That part will sort of slip and you will not learn how to speak. So whatever the child hears is what they speak. And sometimes when they don't hear well, they will speak badly. They are, they, because they're not hearing some sounds, they will, their speech will not be good. Because what, what they hear is what they speak. Yes, exactly. Okay, let's look at a situation whereby a child is brought to you at uh, one month. Is there some improvement if this child wasn't hearing completely and the child is brought to you? Is there some improvement this child can get? Yes, definitely. So, so the reason why we want to test early is to find out whether we can help you or not. But usually, we help you. So at, at one month, that's good. There are some tests we do, especially like the tests they do at birth. If, if they didn't do it, we will do it for you. And then we will say, okay, this child has a problem. We start following up the child. We do more, many more tests. But usually when the child passes the test, or they are, okay, the test is, usually those tests are like pass, fail. So if you pass, we leave you. But we always ask parents, mothers especially, to monitor these children. Because if I test you today and you, okay, what if something happens on the way? So if a mother keeps monitoring, and if they see something, something else they would bring the child back for a test. So the only way to know there's a problem or not is by testing the child. So it's, it's always good to test, whether you, even whether you see a problem or not, especially when they are young. There's a, it's just a small two-minute test that we do. We tell you there's a problem or there's no problem. So that's what we do. Okay, let's look at the excitement part of it. Have you ever treated a child at some point and 
you still have that story with you. Maybe it can inspire me also to, if I am good to go to school next year, I'll start from there. Let's look at that situation whereby you treated a child who was brought to you and this child was completely not hearing. But at some point, the results came out and the mother came back and told you, so my child can now hear 40, 60. Okay, uh, I have a very good example of a child who I saw was entering secondary school. But he had been struggling all through, trying, sitting in front of the class and, you know, teachers helping him. But he was going, I think he was going to S1. So, uh, S1 or S2, something like that. So, this child came and we gave him hearing aids. A hearing aid is a, a gadget that you put on your ear. It amplifies sound, so you're able to hear. So, if, if, uh, if, if you, you are hearing, let's say, 50%, so we help you with the other 50% to make sounds louder you're, and you're able to hear. So this boy went to, to secondary, he went to uh, HSC, he went to university, and this boy is now a doctor. He actually came here, so I had forgotten about him. He came here and he said, wow, I am now going to my, do my internship. I'm now a doctor. Now, what is the latest hearing aid you have? You remember, I gave him a, a, an old-fashioned one because mm. his mom couldn't afford and things like that. He said, now I want to buy a modern hearing aid. No, I think I was, that's the best story for me. And at, at, at the time, it's like, let's say it's like 10 years ago or something. At the time, it was a struggle. We would get even second-hand hearing aids and just give, go and try. If it works for you, good. Mm. So we have seen many children who have gone to school and they have succeeded, they go to university and now doing their jobs and things like that. So, but like I said, it's when do you, when do you come for, for the help, the earlier the better. And how bad is the problem? Some problems uh, are difficult to deal with, but most of them we can deal with them. These days we have solutions to most of the problems. Yes. Okay, let's look at the cause then after I'll go for a break. Let's look at the cause. What are some of the cause that would make someone not here? Well, there are so many causes. So the causes could start from before you are born. What your ma during pregnancy, what the mother goes through. There are some problems, some diseases they get, and it may not affect the mother so much, but you find that the child comes out deaf. So also sometimes per uh, mothers don't go for antenatal. They treat themselves, they take some antibiotics. So those medicines can affect the child. Because the doctors would know, if you go for antenatal, the doctor would know, this one I don't give to a pregnant uh, mother, uh, it will affect the child. Mm. And this disease has to be treated this way so that we don't affect, it doesn't affect the child. So not going for antenatal is a big problem. So the problems before, before delivery. So also events that happen during the delivery time. Where do you deliver your child from? Do you deliver at home? What procedures do they do? Uh, who delivers the child? That's why it's always better to deliver from a hospital. So things which happen around delivery time. There are some diseases which happen immediately after birth. There are so many. So those ones, if they are not dealt with, the child can become deaf. They were born normal, but you find that they become deaf. Even as the child grows, there's some ear infections and all those diseases which can cause hearing problems. And, and, and people who have grown, you, you guys put on uh, ear, ear, earphones headsets. and headsets and they put so loud volume, noise causes hearing problems. That, uh, and, and, and it goes, it, 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 it happens over time. And that will cause permanent hearing loss. It's, uh, it's a big problem which people should deal with. Also people who work in factories, like, you know, there are companies that have a lot of noise. Sound. Yes, I don't know, so many f companies. People don't care, they're doing their work, they're being paid their salary, but at the end of it all, you find that you don't hear like, the oh. noise. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and, and, uh, and, and, and dealing with that problem may be more expensive than you preventing it. So there are so many other causes. Oh, okay, the other causes like aging, that one, you can't do anything about it, but still. <laughs> Those are some of the causes. There are many causes uh, uh, of hearing loss. And the problem is that some causes cause permanent hearing loss. Others, we can treat. If you have an infection, for example, if a child has pus in the ear, you need to go to the ENT doctor and they give you treatment. Treat well and the child will, the hearing will come back. But there are other causes that 
remain. The, the problem remains, and it's it's really we really need to deal with them uh, very well. Okay, I think you've just picked something from the cause of the airing problem. Some of us put on headsets and drive within town and again listen to that higher music and you be like, okay, I need to have my peace. It's not only your peace. The peace can make you spend a lot of money. I'm going out for break. By the way, I'm in town today. I've just visited a hospital. I don't know if it's called a hospital or a center, something like that. So I'm still with Madame Josephine. We are learning. Even me, I'm just sitting here. You can see me. I'm learning at the end of it. I'll also be a teacher. a lot of things in front of me, like we had the hearing part, so we are with another doctor. Hi, doctor. Hello. How are you? Fine, how are you? Maybe briefly, you tell someone out there our names, then after there, we are good to go to start about what we are to talk about. My name is Fiona Kamia. I'm an audiologist with Kampala Audiology and Speech Center. Okay, I think because we are here to learn, mm -hmm. someone briefly take us through this and which situations and at what stage that do we need this? Okay, so following hearing assessment, we determine how well you hear or how badly you hear. And depending on those results, we'll be able to determine how we can help you, the rehabilitation. Rehabilitation involves many things, but sometimes it involves gadgets, introduction of gadgets to assist you to hear better. So. These two are what we call hearing aid. And what they really do is amplify sound. If you wear it in your ear and I speak softly, you'll be able to hear better because it will amplify my voice. They don't do anything internally on you, but they just amplify sound and they are worn externally. Depending on cosmesis, you know people don't like wearing huge things because of the stigma associated with hearing impairment. We are trying to make them as small as possible. So this type will be inserted in the ear canal and it will not be seen outside. So you put it in and then remove it. This one is what we call, you wear it behind the ear. There's been an attempt to make it really small so that it looks like a Bluetooth device to reduce stigma. So these two are wearable on the outside. And these will work for people who have a little bit of hearing a little bit of hearing, but they're not totally deaf because it has to amplify so that you can hear. That means you need to be able to hear the amplified sound. So these are hearing aids. Sometimes you get, especially children, who are born and they don't hear. And because they do not hear, they do not speak. There is a part in the ear called the cochlea that sends, filters the sound and sends it to the brain. So when the sound hits the external part of your ear, ear, it has to be conducted inside. And once it reaches that cochlea, it has to be transduced into electric signals that can go to your brain so that your brain will be able to interpret the sound. Those people who have a problem with that area, the cochlea would need an implant. So this is a cochlear implant. It's made by Medel, our partners. This electro, this it has an electrode and it has an implantable bit. So this electrode will be pushed into your ear and this will be put under the skull. And once you have this, you can wear an external device. This will be implanted inside and you wear an external device. Outside. Yes. This will act as your cochlea. That means you'll be able now to transmit sound to your brain, which you hadn't done before. It's very useful in children who are have a problem with their cochlea and they are born deaf because once we introduce this they will develop speech and hearing like you and me. If this is not done they will not develop speech because they can't hear you speak so they will have to go to the school for the deaf and use sign language. There are different types so this type is what we give children and it's worn outside the ear like a hearing aid. It looks a little bit, it's called a processor, it looks a little bit B, that it helps us to be sure that the child is wearing it. As they grow older, we can move to a, a single bit like this. So this will be one on the scalp, right there. You can have your hair cover it and it will not be seen for, for cosmetic reasons.
day we have learned, like completely have learned a lot. The other word, I cannot say it because <laughs> I have failed to pronounce it, but then it's okay with me because it's my first time. And even you, if it's your first time, we have learned from Dr. Josephine. Dr. Josephine, you're going to either send greetings, comment to the society, anything you want to say out. Okay. Before, uh, be, yeah, before I send greetings, I would like to say that, uh, like we said, they are private centers, but also there is a center which is free, which I want to say so that people who, who, who can't it's for have, government. It's, go, it's for government. It's Nachiwo Blue, Nachiwo Blue Primary School. It's a free center. So if you have a child with hearing problems, bring them, we check them for free. Then we will advise you accordingly. And uh, so maybe my greetings will go to my clients who have been uh, faithful, they've been coming, they're wearing hearing aids, they're having cochlear implants. We also have cochlear implants. A cochlear implant, you had the word cochlear. If you did some biology, you would know the cochlear is uh, the inner part of the ear. So if your cochlear is dead, they will do a surgery and put something inside your ear. And you'll be hearing very well. So we do hearing aids, cochlear implants. So of course we do hearing assessment and advise you. We teach you on how to prevent hearing problems. So, and also my clients and my people who work at Kampala Audiology and Speech Center, those who work with the Nachibubo Blue Assessment Center. I also work in Mulago Hospital. So, greetings to all of them. Okay, we have had doctor and we have learned something. I'm pretty sure me and you have learned because today it's just a door of learning so that we are not left out. It's better we sit down and know something that we haven't been knowing, the situations that are there in the society that me and you don't even know about it, that me and you take time. At least today we have had someone who has told us even with that thing, I always call it a pin, me, that's how I call it. That someone has like a pin on their ears. I don't know how you call it, that's me. Anyway, my name is Susan Awar, and I can, you can, we can. The life I live every Monday on UBC, 8.30 p.m. And I repeat, runs every Wednesday, 11.30 a.m. Like the sea we